Okay. Now we're really getting into it. Maybe it was the wrong map. I didn't pay attention. Well, that's a very fast probe, isn't it? <laughs> the bottom right sending out a probe at his max packs. Damn. And the top left has a blue Terran and it is Cure. So a bit of cheese from max packs. Perhaps even the max packs. Not really unexpected. Yips. I'm gonna mess something up on my end. I can no longer see chat. Okay, well, we're just gonna have to work with it. Max Pax goes for the proxy gateway into an expansion. The Max Pax. Someone actually asked. Does Max Pax still do. Does Max Pax still do the Max Pax? There you go. There's your answer. Uh, Cure is going for a factory here. Which is gonna look really awkward on his minerals in a second, but... I actually wonder why he's going for one base first. Huh. <clears throat> Obviously, Max Pax knows that's something he's going for. The probe is all up in there. Cure now sends out an SCV. Like I said, his minerals enough to build a command center now. His build, his gas and barracks timing were all indicating a one racks expand, but something tipped him off to build that factory so a Hellene could be made or a Wood of Mine. Goes for the Wood of Mine. Bunker now being made, but the reactor will be the sore point here. I see you have to be pulled into it. Not gonna have a ton of surface area to repair, so. Uh, it's gonna be enough just because this one marine will take out the zealot. If it couldn't take out the zealot, I don't know if it'd be enough. Okay, it should be okay now. Should be okay now. And Kira's going to maybe proxy a starport for some type of revenge. Nope, just goes for the SCV scout. Sees that it's gonna be a Stargate follow-up. Not much he can do about that. He is gonna be just contained for a while. Hey, I fixed it. All right. This is a fast APT, right? Yeah. Unless the semifinals go for a very long time. Usually the APT ends around two hours from now, which I mean, could still be the case. Max Pack searches every which way in case a medevac comes along and he spots it. Medevac drops one wood of mine to scare away the stalker. 
Kind of cuts through the middle. Decides maybe to go back home. <laughs> or maybe try and catch some of these units. Yeah, all right. Gonna plant itself in a position to protect the natural. So Kira can finally get up his command center. But, you know, he's getting his natural command center as Max Pax gets his third nexus. Ten worker difference might not be bad if both mules are being dropped. But even then, it's not ideal for the Terran. And yeah, now in this situation, mules are being dropped the main base. Sorry, starting to mine that out pretty quickly. Not, not ideal. Not ideal. Max Pax is in absolute control of the situation. It's making a bit of a slip up, though. It looks like it... Where's that Twilight Council? Yeah, just a slip up. Realizes he made a mistake, cancels it, still loses some gas. But, oh well, gotta live with it. Charge is on the way. Phoenix Charge will be the composition for Max Pax. Which is definitely very strong in the mid-game portion of things. It's gonna fall off if Kira recognizes what the style is, what he can and cannot do. But I guess it's a real pickle for the Terran. You either potentially move into someone who's totally prepared with Phoenix Charge... Or you don't do anything and turtle and just let them develop away from Phoenix Charge into Colossus or Disruptors or whatever. Uh, so when, when does Kira think he's going to have an attack? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just he doesn't really. <laughs> he's going to be defensive even if he knows his opponent can't kill him. He doesn't really have the type of army that can move out. Stims only started recently. Not enough tanks to really do like a pre-stim type of push. Okay. I think Kira might have an okay supply right now. It doesn't look like it's that bad, but in the grand scheme of things, this third base is going to pay off very shortly. And it's going to pay off into the investment of a dozen zealots all at once being warped in. To maybe double upgrades, actually, I think would have been a fine option. Only one forge being made just now, though, so at least Kira's gonna have the upgrades. Got some. Here's Stim, Combat Shield plus one push is almost ready to go, but Max Pax has already saturated all three bases and already has the ability to make, okay, eight Zealots all at once, which is far more modest. Actually grabs plus one armor, which is quite a surprise. Um, very surprising, actually, because while there's some merit to that when you've gone for a blink opener into charge, and I could see why you would do it there, just because sometimes blink stalkers are more of the damage dealers. And the Zealots are just trying to tank a lot, depending on how many Stalkers versus how many Zealots you can go with that three gas style. Uh, sure, whatever. You know, I've, I've, I've seen Zest do that, and I was like, okay, maybe I can, I can kind of figure this one out. When you're going into Phoenix Charge, I am shocked that he's not getting armor. I am. Phoenixes don't benefit from the attack upgrade, because it's not the air attack upgrade. And charge lots are still your main damage dealers. Or, shit, not, that's not what I meant to say. They are your main damage dealers. <laughs> they have to actually connect with the army to get the damage done. And that plus one armor helps a lot. Not against one of mines, though. One of mines just hit everything all at once. And this did not go well at all for Max Pax. <laughs> the engagement, the defense, not going well at all. But at least his zealots get in here and chop Sui. All of the SCDs, 16 SCDs were killed there. But can Max Pax hold on back at home? He took one A move of an uh, engagement, and he was purposefully doing it. He was trying to drag the Phoenix over the bio army, but it just didn't work out as well as he was hoping. And now the bio army gets to micro a little bit. A couple force fields do come down to help out, and two Archons are just beefy enough to not focus fire down. I think Max Pax will ultimately have the hold, but it's scary. It was scary after that engagement. The four Archons are going to sometimes struggle to get any shots off. 
That's where the force field's coming to play, but... Ah, uh, he's been building up his Archon count. He still has a shield battery to fall back to. And of course, he's been working off of three bases the entire time. Here's been working off of two or even one and a half. Another attempt to drag with the Widow Mine to the Phoenix. It didn't really work out. But as more Archons get added in, as the Zella count gets rebuilt, it's less about the Phoenix. It's already less about them. They're mostly dead. And more about, hey, can Force Fields hit? If Force Fields stop here from microing, his army is dead. So far, so good on the micro. I guess another concern for the Terran is that the medevac energy is starting to run out, so he's desperately trying to get some across the map. No, those are just regular ground units. He can't even afford medevacs. He doesn't have the economy to go for medevacs. He just doesn't have the gases, more specifically. That's, that is another timer here for the Terran. One of mine gets a shot, but that's that's the only one of mine on the playing field. Another Archon gets added in. Max Pack feeling a bit of pressure. Does add on a second shield battery, but I'm not sure that'll need it. A lot of the army is even weaker than usual because it wasn't healed up. So another stim hurts. One of mines are threatening, but I think the Phoenixes could if they wanted to. They could also drag those and just kind of get rid of them. Kira's last chance to take a really good engagement. Only one Widow Mine pops off. Weakens a lot of units, but doesn't quite kill them. Immortal is also really helping to chunk through some of these Marauders, and the Medivac count was already low, gets even lower, even less energy to work with, and Max Pax has also been trying to counterattack a couple times, I think. This might be the third or fourth time. And it's finding the SCVs, it's finding a couple of units. The SCVs almost looked like they were going to get pulled, but then decided to go back home. Kira is not convinced that he has to totally all in. And he does defend these zealots, so that's that's nice. But he's still two bases to three. Max Pax, having been mining successfully off of three bases this entire time, there wasn't a lot of pulling away from him. He didn't lose the nexus and have to rebuild it. He's been able to invest in not just the defense, although it was at times on a knife edge. He's also been able to invest in in the future a little bit, so. He was able to buy time to get to a lot of Archons, which have mostly survived. He did add on a Robo and a Templar Archives kind of during some of that process. Now is finally adding on a Robotics Bay. I think either option would have been okay. Either tech more or go for a big counterattack. The counterattack, though, um, you know, for obvious reasons, a little bit riskier, just in case some of these Widow Mines pop off, just in case a defensive Terran's a little bit too much. Adding on technology is going to be the safer way to get ahead in this game. Kira actually checks over to the right side. I think he, I think he did see the zealots and was like, nope, no, thank you, no, thank you. Tries to get the whip observer, just runs into a bunch of archons. Here comes the collapse in. Max packs both going to go for the attack and tech up back at home. Phoenix has dragged the widow mines to at least make the widow mines unsuccessful. And there's the Archon count that Max Pax was pretty damn good about taking. A couple of force fields unnecessary. Kira is just out of this game. He had Twitch one chance. A better chance Thank than I gave him credit for. for. That, that one engagement where the Wood of Mines didn't splash back on his army and all the Zealots magically disappeared, Dark Knight style. It's a little scary. But he was always in a uh, difficult position. Thank you, Mosh SC two for the Prime sub. Here's Micro's pretty impressive considering the ping he has. Yeah, I'd agree. I don't think stutter stepping is the most mechanically difficult, most micro oriented thing that a Terran can do. Because a lot of the time it is just like click mouse hold position, click mouse hold position. That's not that bad. Or a click mouse 
a click click mouse a click either way um but as someone who has had has tried to stutter step with some like like 150 ping it's not even as bad as what Kira's dealing with it does really mess up your flow because while marines are like the easiest thing to stutter step with it's the way that they're how fast they attack and how well that works out there is a rhythm to it and the rhythm gets messed up and, with ping so i agree Max Fax takes the early lead. Now up one on Light Shade. He's also in the upper left. Bottom right, we got Kier. Kier's defense against the, the Max Packs was a little... It was a little odd. He he was going for a one Rex expand from everything I could see. But then added on a factory despite not scouting at all. And I can't really explain that one, to be honest. Someone has an idea as to why he did that. Um, but something tipped him off to be scared. Because if you are going to go for... Because didn't he go for a gas second? Maybe he didn't. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm totally wrong. If you go for a gas first... I mean, regardless, either way... The thing about one basing as Terran is that if you don't get the second gas... If you don't get more than one barracks... You do accumulate enough minerals to get into a command center. It just eventually will happen naturally if you're only on one gas. So, yeah, from everything I saw, he was going to go for one expand, decided not to, goes for a factory. But he does it in a way that isn't positive what Max Pax is doing. And then doesn't actually deal with it that quickly. And I think also his follow-up of those Widow Mines did not pay off. The Widow Mine drop never actually even happened, right? Because it was stopped by the stalker, went back home to defend, and then the phoenixes arrived and just, you know, kind of were like, you can't do it anymore. So Kira also invested in a bunch of things that didn't help him, and he was contained. So he, he could have instead gone for four Widow Mines and a Medivac, he could have gone for a, a Cyclone and a Liberator or something, I don't know. Cyclone and a Medivac actually would have been a great option to try and bust out. So he was contained for a little while than he had to be. His aggression didn't work out. Max Pax just continued his lead. Then we had that uh, nice little battle, but not nice enough for Kier. Max Pax! I'm I'm guessing I missed the 14 pylon or the 13 pylon, but he is going to go for the proxy Stargate. That's almost always what he does, 13 pylon. Proxies the Stargate, and then uh, kills the Terran. That's how he do. Zella gets microed, so that's nice. Bunker's already done. That's great. The cure. He knows that that's the only start of dealing with this Stargate shit. <laughs> He's had to deal with it a couple times. Now, it's pretty much agreed upon, I would get, I guess, that the way you deal with this is to get Cyclones and the Magfield Accelerator. Technically, there's a missile turret response, but I haven't really seen that in quite some time. I really haven't seen it until Euthermal made a video about it, honestly. And then it's been nothing but attempted cyclone responses, because Max Pax used this against Clem all the time, and would still occasionally whip it out when he faces Clem. But, uh, yeah, the cyclones into the Vikings is the other option, I guess. The cyclone magfield accelerator is a great option, but cyclones and then a good number of Vikings works too. Kind of the point of all the defenses, though, is unit retention. Void Rays don't do well once there's a certain number of units. Uh, but if you keep their production, like, not, this Parrot's not going to help out anymore. If you kill the units that do produce one at a time, then they're not going to ever get enough to actually stop you. And the unit retention is going to be already a bit better for the Protoss because they have shield batteries to go back to. So you need to get to three Cyclones with Magfield Accelerator, or you need to get to six Vikings after putting the reactor on the starboard. And already it seems like here is not defended well enough. The loss of the first Cyclone was big. Fucking Marine. <laughs> Stop this Cyclone from microing. You fire that Marine. You kill that Marine.
SCP is having to not mine the repair of barracks. That isn't isn't that helpful. Eight of them go down. And now Max Pax is gonna leapfrog his shield batteries up to the natural. Makes him even more lethal. Because the one thing that Kira's been trying to do is trying to push pull those void rays as far away as possible from the shield batteries. So that if he does get a lock on, if he does get to target them down, they don't get to go back to the shield battery. But even as Max Pax confidently moves away from all of the shield batteries, it's because he knew he had too many units. GG. Kira doesn't hold against the cheese. Proxy Void Ray is not overpowered, but it is finicky. Okay, so we already got a 2-0 lead for the Protoss in the upper right. It's Max Pax. On the bottom left is the blue Terran. It is Cure. He didn't have trouble with the Terrans. He didn't have trouble with the Zergs. He's having trouble with Max Pax. I think it's better to get a second factory against that. Uh, second factory is pretty expensive. About as expensive as Starport, you know. I wouldn't mind it if you're going for the Magfield Accelerator choice. But I think the fear there is that it just it doesn't it doesn't give enough. chase potential, I guess? Because I honestly don't mind the idea. There's a reason that pro gamers usually try and go for the starport, though, and try and get to a good number of Vikings. Because the Vikings can out-micro the, uh... Oh, the Void Ray, just barely. Just like a Cyclone, I guess. 
just barely out micro them. But the Vikings have a stronger chance of getting the one shot, whereas the Magfield Accelerator, I mean, if there's six Cyclones killing a single Void Ray, it's basically a one shot, but uh, <laughs> it's usually not a literal one shot. They get a lock on and they eventually tear it down. Which I think could still be good enough. But then he kind of puts you in an awkward position where you have a second factory if they actually do disengage and kind of macro back at home. And a second factory is not going to be very helpful for the rest of the TDP should it play out. And it's possible that a proxy Stargate does play out into a macro game. I think that's more of the fear. It's, it's frustrating to lose to the cheese and it's even more frustrating to seemingly win against the cheese and still lose a macro game. Yeah, then if they go into Tempests, Cyclones will be outranged at all times. It's probably another big reason. To be fair, they'd have to, like, you know, transition into it. But I guess once you see the second factory, that would be the response. See you second factory? Okay, Tempest it is. How come they don't have cams set up? Because this isn't a DreamHack broadcast with a bunch of production, dude. <laughs> Even if they had their cams available, it'd be very difficult to dole out the cams to every single community broadcaster. The technology would just be way too difficult. They'd have to ask all 120 participants of the Open Cup to be prepared to have their camera ready. And then they'd have to wait for all of the community casters to get their production set up. Which might not sound like that big of a deal, but even like two minutes for every broadcaster or between every series can really add up. This is this is not a main stage studio production. Dude. Well, we got a three racks here from Cure. So he's finally allowed to play out, you know, a game. He wasn't Max Pax, he wasn't Proxy Stargated. Max Pax goes into a fast Dark Shrine, which actually really throws a wrench into Kira's plans. You just make one DT at a time. So he knows the three racks. He, Max Pax didn't know until then, but seeing all those Marines, the three racks. You can make one DT at a time, and they either have to throw their hands up in the air and say, okay, I guess I'll try and kill what I can. Or they, they run back home, and that's not that bad. It's also not ideal. But you know what? Max Pax actually is not... He's going to have... He, okay, so he's going to hope that the army responds to the harassment in the main, but I don't think that's... I don't think that's correct. Max Pax really needs a DT to be swiping away at this army right now, and it's not. So if it works in one now... The army could still do a fuck ton of damage. Mm, I don't know about this for Max Pax. Pylon gets taken down as well. No immortal, no shield battery. Probes never had a chance. Yeah, that's it, actually. Okay, well, Kira went to the free racks. GG. GG, 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 GG. That was a very easy way to get back into the series. Warning, philanthropist programs detected in comm server 04. Thank you, Anonymous, for getting a sub. Max Pax wouldn't appear on camera anyway, so what's the point? Yeah. His parents don't want him on camera. 
Which, I mean, Warning. to me is like a little extreme. Thank you for another gifted sub. But, eh, it's not really extreme. I think it's a lot to not allow the guy to be on camera. But I mean, it's not really extreme. I mean, more and more as technology Warning. gets more terrifying. And people go overboard on... Like, uh, putting their, their child's, what's, how do I say this? You know, like, their, people are going overboard with how much they're putting out on the internet about their child. <laughs> like, people are starting to get, I guess, wary of posting pictures of when they're younger and stuff like that. Because they're kind of interfering with their child's future privacy concerns. I guess it's, uh... Yeah, like I said, it's a lot to not let him have a camera on, but it's not the most Warning. extreme thing ever. I do think it's a matter of time, though. Like, when he's 18... Actually, I don't know the rules for his region. Is 18 an adult there? I don't know. <laughs> but anywho, um, when he's 18, he can make a decision. Is he 17 now? Thank you for all the gifted subs, Anonymous. Let's see here. July 2004, ages 16 to 17. Why would they have ages 16 to 17? Oh, because they don't have his... Uh... Oh, they actually don't even have his very specific date. They don't have July 20th or something. Oh, well. So he has turned 17, maybe. Because <laughs> we're July 19th now. Yeah, when he's 18, I assume they're going to let him choose whatever he wants to do. Like, your face... I guess the reason I think it's a lot is because your face will eventually end up on the internet. I mean, there's really nothing you can do about that, but I suppose it makes sense to let... to stop your underage kid as long as possible. All right, now it is at least a series. In the top right, still up two to one. It is Max Pax. The bottom left, we have Kier. Bit of a cheeky three rush against a cheeky DT attack. I still think the DTs should have done better. If Max Pax had the one DT in the Warp Prism, go harass, and then had two warp ins, I'm pretty sure would have two warp ins back at home. He warps in one, sends it after the army, it gets scanned. He has a second one in his back pocket to also help. Now again, Maybe the army still blitzes through and deals catastrophic damage, and the DTs don't save you in time. Which is, I guess, you could say happened in that last game. But, um, didn't even really get the chance to show what I was talking about, because Max Pax instead decided to invest in the aggressive DTs. It's really, I mean, if he had known 100% where Cure's army was, like how close it was to him, maybe that would have changed his decision. Maybe you thought that Cure was waffling a bit more in the middle of the map, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. So they, they both do kind of risky builds. But Cure's risk pays off a lot more. Man Center and Nexus going down, so another actual macro game. Max Pax is gonna get his probe back into the natural and see what followed up that Marine. I mean, just confirms for now that it is, in fact, a Command Center. Let's just hold on to that probe. Couple of chronos on the adepts instead of just one and into stalkers. There's a bit of an intention to do some damage, get behind this bunker that's being built. Some Marines jump on top of the adept, however. Whew. Whew. The adept barely lives, but weak as that adept is, the second adept probably won't add very much. 
Shading both of those adepts now behind the bunker. I don't know if it's really worth it. Max Pack's just gonna use him to scout now. All right, Blink's on the way. Stalker's now being f built. I don't know, I was gonna say filmed. Where did that come from? Being built. And uh, it's just the second gateway so far. Max Pax does love four gates though. So I'm like, eh? Good, good, good. Robo didn't seem as quick as it was in the past for his four gates, but no, oh, still gonna be four gate. Yep, all right. As long as you can get the War Prism across the map with your units, which is gonna be the case. Jerry's gonna do a little one of my drop and he's gonna be able to see that it is a four gate, kind of as the four gate's prepped and ready to go. He's gonna go into a Raven, which sometimes is really not that helpful. I would say it's definitely not helpful. Certainly not worth the delay on tank production. If he even really goes for tanks, this might try to swap off. Well, once he sees the four gate, he shouldn't swap off. He should add on tanks, but they're really not as fast as they could be. It's a little scary. What am I drop will eventually be cleaned up. He doesn't really pull back the blink attack either, because you're waiting for the war prism anyways. Oh, 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 oh! Ooh, eight probes go down. That's a nice hit right there. That's a nice hit, and these natural probes aren't doing a whole lot for very long. Adept gets into the main, funnily enough, and weakens up a ton of SCVs, but that did do damage, and it did stall out the push by 10 seconds. Having to clean that up. More prisms like, all right, come on, let's get going. One tank is ready, but it is well positioned. I don't know if I like that blink. Uh, somewhat good micro to try and save the stalkers, but that was a lot of DPS. He blinked into everything. Like the whole concept of the blink stalker push is that you can catch them out of position. Bio on one side, tank on the other, bunkers here, not there. But he just ran into every unit, almost, plus a tank, plus an auto turret. The second bunker wasn't full, then it was, so the stalkers really can't do anything against the front, and Kira is held wonderfully and easily. The problem with the four gate is that if it doesn't do damage... Ooh, I don't know about that blank either. If it doesn't do damage, you're very behind economically for Protoss. You're behind technology, you're behind... You even lose out on map presence, assuming that your stalkers also got killed, which is what's happening right now. You got some stalkers, but like, ugh, I thought map control. Did the war prism get killed? Oh no, I think I recall. So Max Pax is in a lot of trouble. Equal workers is terrible for the Protoss. Being up 10 workers, but no third nexus would be terrible for him, so he's just terrible all around, economically. His army is not threatening at all. Blink only is not a problem. Even the charge will not be a problem. Max Pax goes for Colossus, decides to swap over to a Disruptor. I think he gotta. I think he gotta hope for one amazing Disruptor strike. So while the Colossus is dependable and can hold some of these chokes and all that good stuff, you just do not have a lot of units. Disruptor. Disruptor tries to go for the Raven, stops it from getting the Fierce Matrix, and gets an okay shot with the Disruptor, but he also lost like half the Stalkers. So Kira still has a dominating army supply lead, a dominating army type, and again, just needs to make sure not to get hit by a Disruptor. And at this point, I'm actually not sure what the Disruptor could hit that would that would cause this game to go the other direction. Oh my god, that! That! It would hit that! Oh, at the time I spoke, Kira had not had his units quite so bulked up. Even then, even then, it's not gonna be enough. 
There's just enough bio by the looks of things. The tank is going to get hit by the Disruptor, which is not really ideal. The Disruptor wanted to hit this little squad of units, and then the Zealots could clean up the tanks. GG. Here brings it up to a Tide series. Mana versus Soul is still happening. I did think that series is going to go longer than this one. I think Mana versus Soul and we're likely to play 15, 20 minute games. So I come before I gave you off one base and was Liberty, but now you need two bases. You have way too many resources. No. The uh, four gate on one base back in Wings of Liberty was a very different economy. You started off with less workers, so getting to the four gate took a little bit of time. I'd expect that if you tried to one base four gate in Legacy of the Void, it just happens faster, right? Someone could go look it up, but keep in mind that the old timer from Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm isn't accurate. Legacy of the Void is slower time. It's real time. Um, it also is a... The one base four gate is very much just a one and done. Either you surprise the other guy and you've already got momentum on your side and you kill him or you don't. People are also much worse against the four gate and just one base defense in general Wings of Liberty. People bring up the four gate a lot as a Wings of Liberty thing, but really it was like a 2010 kind of 2011 thing and then was relegated to mostly just bad ladder people losing to it. And then the four gates that we saw working up until like 2012 was also very minimal. So I guess TLDR, people got better against it. And the, uh, the type of units you were getting with the one base four gate also was basic bitch gateway units. Whereas for the two base four gate in Legacy of the Void includes blink. If you don't have blink, it doesn't work. I think I've covered all the all the bases there. Top right, 2000 Atmospheres, it is Cure. Bottom left, it is Max Packs. Cure's impressive, not sure why Tezosa said Cure is bad. Did they say that? I was reading Team Liquid today, um, and fa fair enough, this guy actually, you know, was very, he admitted he was totally incorrect, but it was funny. Um, this guy said that Trap wasn't that impressive of a player and that he thought that Bunny was going to be uh, his like biggest obstacle getting into the finals. <laughs> Which when yesterday or today or whatever happened, he did go back into the same thread and went, yeah, I got proved totally wrong. <laughs> so that was funny. But what did he say? What else did he say? Um. So this guy, okay, yeah, so he's like, Tastos is just failing in their analysis a bit. Talking Trap up is the biggest threat even as Parting beats Trap in the run of 16. Trap is too orthodox. Tastos thinks Bunny Darker is less likely than the finalist, but I think it's the most likely. So first of all, I can't believe this guy underestimated Trap. I didn't think anyone was doing that anymore, but apparently he still was, and he got proved totally wrong for it. Second of all, he thought that Bunny and was like, Included in the list of biggest threats, which I just, I just 
I can see him being a threat, but like the biggest threat to trap? I don't know, even before Bunny got 0 for it, I don't think I agree with that. And then he said that taste oats are failing in their analysis a little bit, which actually overall I agree with, and I don't think they can really say anything against it, to be honest, because they are prioritizing other things outside of, of StarCraft 2, and that's totally fine. But then proceeds to give them perhaps the most credit possible, because <laughs> I, I think their analysis as far as the, the player dynamics was totally on point, <laughs> as seen by the fact that Bunny just got over. Ah, uh, anyways. But I, anyway, I, it's all stemmed from Tastosa said Kira's bad. Did they say that or did they say that he wasn't playing as well? Because, uh, to be fair... Okay, actually, something interesting is happening. Kira's going for three racks, but he's starting off with a double Reaper opener, so that is different. Uh, but to be fair, Kira doesn't really perform as well as it feels like he should. For his, like, online dominance and the way that he can take out, you know, players somewhat easily sometimes. Like, it just feels like he's still pretty spiky. He's, like, very consistently round of four material, but as far as actually winning tournaments, I guess, maybe that's the question. And then you don't, I mean, consistent round of four, but it's not surprising when he gets knocked out in the round of eight or something. That type of, that type of play. Double Reaper might be a bit of a surprise. I think the most important thing about the Reapers, though, is they proceed to do no damage, is that the Oracle is kept over here for a little bit longer. Now, the three racks isn't going to hit for another 45, 60 seconds, so the Oracle will eventually see that it is a three racks. But the Oracle doesn't get to do any SCD damage while the Marine count was still low. Doesn't even really have enough energy to start doing a lot of damage, and the Reapers can at least take solace in that, I guess. Twilight Council pretty quick after that, with Phoenix, could be charge again. Fast third Nexus coming down. Yep, it is going to be Phoenix charge. Ah, uh, that's interesting, I don't know... Wait, three racks hits before Phoenix charge, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I don't think I've seen too many three racks versus Phoenix charge. Now... Roddy could speak more to this, but I'm pretty sure the three racks is very difficult for a Stargate player to hold. Your Phoenixes don't really handle the amount of Marines that come with this very well at all, nor your Oracles don't really help either. And even if you tried to, like, I mean, why, why would you put a Void Ray against that either, right? So, you, so your Stargate's just kind of completely useless, whereas maybe a Twilight Council has finished up Blink, maybe. Uh, a Robo could produce faster Colossus, I mean, even then, if you're actually getting for it. Uh, the point is, it's going to be difficult to hold. The Marines actually slip past a couple of force fields, which is kind of what Max Pax was hoping would defend for him. But he needed a uh, third force field. I think Cure is going to be pushed back, though. Cure went for the Nexus instead of trying to pounce on the remaining units. That gave time for Max Pax to rebuild a couple more... Adepts, actually, I think is what he built. Three more Zealots, something like that. Time for Charge to finish up as well. Kira is going to evacuate with whatever Marines he had left over, but that was not as bad as it could have been. Yeah, if you guys can't anticipate me talking about GSL spoilers when I start talking about Tastosis and Cure and Bunny and Trap. Well, that's on you. Also, I'm very unsympathetic when it comes to spoilers. I've figured this out. I've, I just, I just... It's unfair. I just don't care about spoilers personally. Sure, but I also think people are gigantic babies about it. I mean, there are people who are so extreme that when you tweet during GSL, wow, I can't believe this happened, people will yell at you. I think they're a bunch of babies. 
But honestly, there's also things like... So apparently one of the inside a feedback thread, someone said, I wish during live broadcasts, the casters wouldn't talk about the other group. You know, sometimes like the group thing pops up and it's like, oh, soul two zero need. And we're like, oh, wow, it's a surprising result in the other group that we're not casting right now. Someone suggested that we stop doing that because he likes to watch the other groups. And you might be in this chat. I'm just going to say, I think you're a gigantic baby as well. As, as I said, I'm very unsympathetic. Even cruel when it comes to spoilers and my indifference to hiding spoilers. Anywho. Kira's been just sharking around with a very large and very scary bio ball. This is giving Max Packs time to set up his gateways and get to a decent number of charge lots. More than decent. He's up to 23. He's trying to add on those Archons. Again, opting for the plus one attack. Which I'm still surprised by. Max Pax has ended up quite this around. He's also got a couple force fields. Kira actually very late to reacting. Also just didn't know the Zealots are coming in from behind. They don't quite grab that full surround, so Kira's able to micro his little heart out on 250 ping and take down at least some of the Zealots with him. Also trying to take on some of the Phoenix. Maybe he takes on the Phoenix, he could lift off, but that's a lot of Phoenix still left over. He's forced into a choke, into a little section where he can try and do the most damage done. Did he do a lot of damage? I don't know about that one. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. That was a lot of Terran that just went down there. Medivacs included. You simply just don't escape from Charge Lot Phoenix, right? Whereas the number of Zealots that went down, well, I think they're a bit easier replaced. Especially with the gateway being in proxy. Feedbacks are coming. Yeah, he's going to morph into Archons immediately. But the drag of the Phoenix are here. Two Wood of Mines were dragged. Two Wood of Mines hits. Third and fourth Widowmine hit too without being dragged over the Terran army, so I'd call the, the Widowmines a success. Something for Kira to hold on to, and his production is actually pretty good, so he's already up to a very good number of Marines and Marauders, and I don't think Max Pax's counter is going to do quite what he expected. There was like six Widowmines. That already is a decent amount against someone trying to do charge off Phoenix. The fact that they were controlled fairly well is also very important, because if all six did splash back on the Terran army, well, the Terran army's dead. Production's been messed up, but it looks like this might just be game over anyways. Here is a 50 supply lead, a gigantic arc of units, and still has Widow Mines alive. We fire very soon. And Max Pax has not really gone into anything better. These Archons are not doing the trick. They're trying, though, with the shield battery. I mean, they're, they're pretty intimidating, but... Still a 60 supply difference. Kira reinforcing, and those Widow Mines are now off cooldown for all those shots. There they are. There they are. Kira goes to a 2-0 deficit and brings it back all the way to game five. And we'll now take the series and move on to the finals. I would have figured most of the Koreans would find it very, very, very difficult to make it to the finals. Very difficult.